Maria Georges, and this is my dad, Nick Georges, and you are watching The Batchmakers. Cheers. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Batchmakers, presented by Good Time Media. I'm Wyatt. That's Michael. That's Lizzie in the middle. Today, we have a very special episode, uh, capped off by an interview with uh, Michael's first ever Bachelor crush, Greer. So stick around for the end for that great conversation. Love talking to her. She was fantastic. We have some Bachelor news to get to, a golden divorce to recap. But first, we have to kind of do a manhunt here because we had a tournament yep. challenge for the Batchmaker uh, group, the fandom, all you lovely people out there. And the winner got to decide the draft order for our next season. And we don't know who the winner is. The winner is somebody titled ESPN fan 8481775744. They have yet to name themselves and come out, which Michael, I kind of respect. I think it's a cool move to just win a tournament challenge and not never like say who you are. It's like an anonymous donation of a million dollars. Like peace. You'll never know. It's kind of badass, but we'd like to yeah. find you. We will find you and we will make you pick the draft order. Yeah, it's Sorry. it's weird. Like it was my I don't I don't know what to do. Our hands are tied because at this point they just have to reach out. I had assumed they would see it because they follow the show, but I put it on my Instagram mm -hmm. story. It's not no one replied. So maybe hopefully saying this now they listen to the show because there's no way they just randomly joined it. So I don't know. We'll we're have yeah. to find if if you're listening. If you're ESPN fan eight four eight whatever whatever. Or you think that's you? Go check and let us know because you want a big prize. Go I'm going to send you some merch and you pick the draft order. So just show yourself a little bit. Also, other note for people: uh, we want to review some more reviews. So get back on that. Start leaving reviews yep. on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever. We will review your reviews on here. Um, and last week, I think we got to talk about last week before we can talk about this golden divorce. We interviewed Maria's dad, Michael. Takeaway. What what do we think? How do we think it went? Yeah, I mean, just a small takeaway is the fact that he like he's the coolest person ever. So like that's like the I guess the smallest takeaway of it. Um is the, just the fact that he's like so cool. Um but no, he he was awesome. He gave some some great insight and he, he has his opinions. He's 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 just like Maria, we get where she gets it from. Mm -hmm. He speaks his mind and he you know, he's 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 out front with you, you know. Uh, he stands on business. He does. And I don't the la like I don't want to pit the two together because we love them both mm -hmm. equally. Do, do we do we all right, on the spot, do we power rank Maria and Maria's dad one two? Or like do we have to for content purposes or is one A one B? It's kind of like a chicken or egg. What came for, you know? Well, that no, that's, that's right? a bad analogy because what one Sorry. is the father? It's exactly so he's was so is he the chicken he would be the yeah he would be the chicken, be the chicken. well yeah. maria's uh, mom would be the chicken yeah, yeah he would not be the such. chicken what are hens are hens <laughs> he'd, he'd, he'd be the, he'd be the other chicken well, hens <laughs> the, hens are the woman so so he'd be so the chicken. chickens don't lay eggs somebody else hens hen. do. yeah chickens don't lay eggs whoa what whoa breaking news batter maker breaking news chickens don't lay hold eggs. on let me let me double check this, but I'm pretty sure. So only hens Chickens. lay the eggs. I mean, that makes sense if they're the females, but that screws up every metaphor ever made. Yeah. Why did the chicken um, okay. cross the so road says, to go find a hen? Yeah. So it says hens begin laying eggs around six months of age and can continue oh my gosh. five to ten years, with peak production occurring in the first two years. They will lay roughly six eggs each week. Um, production drops Oops. each year when the hens molt, and that means that they replace their feathers in the early fall. Whoa. I didn't, uh, you learn something new so, every day. I bet, uh, the bachelor nation, batchmaker nation, uh, you're learning something new. That's crazy. To first me. ever yeah. chicken facts on batchmakers. Yeah. I don't even remember how we got here, but Nick was fantastic last week. I do want to <laughs> recap some things. Um, there was a takeaway that somehow people thought nick might be throwing shade at daisy for talking about the bachelorette which first of all dumb because it's dumb for two reasons one it's dumb because daisy 
had already talked about saying no to the bachelorette on the show. So it's not like she was breaking any news. Yeah. She had already said it during the yeah. finale. Hey, I'm not the bachelorette, which we, we have an issue with on the production side of things, not with the Daisy side of things. Yeah. But so first of all, that was dumb. And second of all, you think, you think Nick has time to recap what Daisy's doing with podcasts? No, Nick doesn't have time for that. He is, he's, Running the chocolate so factory, candy. all the Oompa Loompas. Yeah. He's got to worry about that. He's not watching the vile files. I'll promise you that. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah. That. Um. I'm glad. I'm glad nobody actually really thought that the media is just trying to pit, pit the bash makers against. The yeah. World. Fake news. Because he's a he's a bash maker. Um. The other thing I want to talk with you guys, kind of in house, we can have a little team huddle here. Uh, I was thinking about this late one night. The thing with the interviews that we do, um, I'm a little worried about them because, listen, we joke on this show. We do bits. We know we're joking 99.9% .9 of the time. The interviews add a certain level of this is real <laughs> where, where people are going to take what we say more seriously than they would maybe in this context where it's just us shooting the shit. Um, I'm just wondering what you guys feel about that because I think this is our first moment of like, oh, people are going to say or take what we say seriously, which first of all, uh, cautionary, just warning, don't do that. <laughs> don't take what yeah. we say seriously. But I don't know what you guys are thinking there. A little team huddle discussion. I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I on the like the Yahoo News and stuff that we're, that we're talking about the Bashmakers podcast and, and given the given the shout out. It didn't make it seem like, oh, the super serious podcast, <laughs> Batchmakers. They, they didn't even say the Batchmakers. They were like, batchmakers. one said Batchmaker. One one just said er. I was like, like, it was just like, they didn't know what's really going on. Only the people that uh, have, have been continued following us or just now following us know that, you know, we, it's all jokes. It's all in good, good, good just heart. Just joking. Right. Just, just joking. I'm joking. joking. <laughs> It's literally that's that's gonna be our response when we get in trouble one day and like we accidentally like break someone's contract or something. We're like, I'm joking. I'm just I'm just joking. That's it. But but I'm joking. Sir, you're under arrest. Well, it was a bit. Uh, I'm it joking. was a bit. It was a bit, officer, I swear. Um all right, last takeaway. I don't know if you have any more takeaways. Um I wanna say Lizzie, hard hitting question. Well done. I wanna I just wanna like from your perspective, how long did it take you to come up with the hobbies question? Um, you know, I put, <laughs> I put a lot of thought into yeah. that one. Um, I would say it probably took me like a day yeah. or two. Oh, for sure. Had to really reflect on it. Which stick yeah. around to the end because Lizzie has a fantastic performance from Lizzie's Corner where yeah. we end the episode with Greer with our second ever mm -hmm. edition of Lizzie Time. And, uh, it's fantastic. It's great, great work. So stick around for that. We need to, you need to come up with a name for that segment, Lizzie. I feel like Lizzie's corner is perfect. Lizzie's corner. All right, let's like head over to. Yeah. We should <laughs> put him in a corner. It's like, what are your hobbies? Tell me them now. Yeah, one of these interviews, you should come out like hot and be like, "What? Hey, thanks for coming on Batchmakers. Uh, what's your deepest insecurity?" And just stare at them, see what they come up with. <laughs> and Michael and I will leave. Oh, yeah. So that's what we'll do next time. Mike, like it'll be Lizzie's <laughs> corner and Michael and I will leave the room. And it's like, all right, Lizzie, we'll call us when you're done. I don't want to know. <laughs> we can do that. It's just Let us know when you're finished. With <laughs> Grill. Um, but yeah, any other takeaways from the interview with, with uh, St. Nicholas? I mean, he's just the coolest guy ever. A plus yeah. plus. A plus plus. Um, all right. Well, let's get into uh, the biggest news in bachelor nation uh probably of this year uh michael never before seen never too. before seen the first ever golden divorce gary and Teresa ha are no more um this comes two weeks after i actually spoke with Teresa. weirdly enough um via facetime i didn't get any inkling there but she didn't tell me i promise i promise i'm not holding out on you guys right. if i knew i would have told you guys but uh michael I have my thoughts on this. I've I've put some TikTok videos out there. What what do you think? What what goes through your mind when you saw this? I mean, I kind of saw it coming. I believe I called it 
coming. Um, I believe I, I believe I called it back in the day. Sorry. Joe's Joe Joe allowed heads. to make jokes. I'm allowed to make jokes. God, Joe. Um, no, but I, I kind of saw it coming. It, it mainly just boils down to the fact that he's an Indiana a Hoosier, and she lives in New Jersey? Uh, New yeah, Hampshire? East Coast, I think. Somewhere. East Coast? Um, and so that's kind of what it came down to. And I was like, it, you know, like that's not going to work. That's why it has to be a regional based thing. I'm sure we're going to talk about it yeah. later about my genius idea yep. of what love is blind does, but that's if They want to do that. They got to do it like locally. So they could, it could actually work because I think they could have worked if they happened to live in the same city or state, Yeah. but they're old. Old people don't even like travel that often. I'm not to like say you no know, old people don't travel, but like when I'm at the airport, I see more young people than old people. That's fact. Good research. That's that's market research right there. Thank you. Well done. Um, Thank you. So my takeaway, and I've kind of been on this train for a while, and this kind of cements it. The Bachelor has an engagement issue where they are so focused on shows ending in engagement that it kind of shoots itself in the foot when the relationships don't work out and the engagements don't work. Cause then everyone points to the terrible like success rate of these shows when at the end of the day, I don't think people care about the engagement as much as the uh, producers do the producers push for it. But at the end of the day, we just want a couple to leave together. And I know there's the big mm-hmm. final shot. First of all, you can replace that with a final rose ceremony. That would be dramatic where you have both of them standing yeah. there and he or she picks one that's just as dramatic as saying more it's, well, it's more dramatic yeah it's a, yeah it's way more dramatic. especially if, if you if you edit it a little bit like more evenly because by the time the last the finale comes along you already know who's yeah. winning you already know who's winning right because of the edit so you could edit it to where it's 50 50 ball you know flip yeah. a coin and then rose ceremony boom yeah, like, we, but then half the audience might the be the finale. We were tuning in to see how Daisy would handle it. We were, weren't tuning in to see who he picked. We figured, like, I mean, like, yeah, we were like probably not a hundred percent sure, but we, everyone was like, yeah, it's probably Kelsey A. So imagine going in and he's got one rose and he just like imagine the silence for like a 10 second pause yeah. as he waits to say the final name. That's electric. And then no one cares that on. Neil Lane didn't get his bag for selling another ring. Like it's not that it, yeah, no they, one cares about the engagement as much as them. They could even do a thing after, you know, with Neil Lane if they. Yeah. Neil Lane has probably other. He's probably in more than the diamond business. Actually, no, no it's, I think that's it. He's a one one. Uh, Maybe player. they get a necklace for for the winner. Yeah. The winner, or no, the second place person gets a Neil Lane necklace, <laughs> yeah. a diamond it's necklace, because after they just got dumped on national television, and the final gold rose yeah. goes to Teresa Leslie, could have just walked out of there with some fucking bling. Yeah. That like that's so much better. And then yeah, if they end up getting engaged later on, bring them back on a finale or do a little cut in during an episode mm-hmm. and be like, hey, here's Neil Lane, like. Whatever. You can film that later. Quit pushing for the engagement. It's only ruining your show. That's basically my takeaway. And they, they didn't just push for an engagement. For they pushed wedding. for a golden wedding. Right. That golden wedding was announced, what, right after it yeah, aired? Almost immediately. I think at the finale. At the finale, it announced said, oh, a live golden finale. And it got live golden wedding. And it's, what, a month and a half away? Yeah. Or something? That's stupid. Stupid. I, and I, so I made the comparison. I said the Bachelor franchise is, the Bachelor franchise needs a Hunger Games moment between PETA and Katniss. If you're not familiar, they have the Hunger Games where they fight to the death and there's only, usually only one winner. That's the way it's always ran or run. Ran? The way it's always ran. Been ran. The way it's always run. The way it's always run. Runded. Runded. Um, runded. But there's always been one winner, and they decide, you know what? Screw the system. We're going to eat these poisonous berries and not let the system win. We need a couple 
in the bachelor franchise be like screw this engagement process we like each other let's date let's leave together that's what they need yeah. and then take it one step further with the hunger games analogy what do they have what what, what are they divided up into a room what oh district <laughs> not a room but oh districts. so you have a bunch of you have poor people you have poor people and rich people not quite not quite where saying? i'm going with it michael but you're close you're on the nose you're right there just like districts. you were talking with districts with the golden bachelor cities regionally, regionally based. based the golden bachelor the biggest issue we probably think with gary and Teresa, not probably think i think the biggest issue is the distance they're, they're all settled into their home towns which is so fair at 70 years old so do it based <laughs> off the di like districts have a district district 12 has yeah. a golden bachelor and then you see who ends up together it should be based regionally michael you had this idea weeks ago and i'm proud of you you were right thank you well done thank you thank you thank you um i think the only problem with it is the amount of people in one so like let's say you'd probably have to use like the la or new york metropolitan area mm -hmm. right and how many people are qual like qualified you know contestants can you find from have smaller know, seasons region, get 10 people area. yeah no i know and i think that's i think it's 100 fair but i think that's the the problem that comes with that and that's the same thing i think love is blind runs into because they do it regionally based yeah. um but then with love is blind you know kind of going on with that regionally based you don't have to end at the you know at the final rose ceremony you could show like their life living together after because that's what like yeah the love is blind experiment they get married i mean they get they get engaged and they live together and then at the end it's the final you know wedding of will they say yes will they say no you know so you could kind of kind of steal that in a way but with old people and with the bachelor franchise and it would kind of go crazy i there's better ways to do it i understand like tradition but just just change it up tradition. it didn't work with paradise tradition. your success rate for golden franchise is zero so let's maybe let's let's yeah. brainstorm a little bit let's work to, we're working with you not against you bachelor nation we want to help we want we want because if we don't if they don't have a show Thanks. we don't have a show so we're, we're here to help we're not trying yeah. to tear you down we're just here to help yeah. um speaking if we don't have a show they don't have a show Goes, street goes yeah. both ways, yeah. pal. Yeah, for sure. Mr. Producer sitting in the van. Um, speaking about not trying to tear you down, just being on your side, I want to talk about Joey and Kelsey for a little bit. They, they're they so happy. They're in the this honeymoon phase. It's great to see them together. Their Instagram usage right now is a little much. So I'm going to – And TikTok. And TikTok. TikTok. Not a, like – Again, this isn't a slight on either of them. Like, go love each other. This is probably just coming from a very jealous, spiteful place in my heart that just hates people being in love and happy. Maybe. There's a small – like, yeah. that's very possible, right. the the reasoning behind this. But their Instagram interactions with each other reminds me so much of the high school couple who would kiss in the hallways and then say, I'll miss you as they go to class for 45 minutes. Like, that's the dynamic I'm getting from them right now. Some of these comments – uh joey posting a picture of kelsey just checking in as the luckiest guy in the world um <laughs> kelsey cringe of the week the week is kelsey and joey's interactions on instagram um kelsey posts a normal picture and then joey just comments hashtag kelsey is hot <laughs> all right that's funny no that's funny he did that and then that's he funny. posted his own picture from them from celebrity family feud Use the same hashtag, hashtag Kelsey is hot. And then Kelsey replied to that. Her comment on that was hashtag Joey is smoking. Um, and then Joey and then Kelsey had another one where she's like, stop, you're, you're so cute. It's too much. It's like, just talk to each other. Like you're with each other 24-7. Yeah. Just say it to each other. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one getting these vibes from it, but it just threw me off a little bit. I mean, I think it's also kind of just like they're kind of like – memeing a bit you know they could definitely just be sitting next to each other and be like oh, see that's like uh people are gonna yeah. love this or people are gonna like talk about this i you think know? it's and a bit it's, and it's i think joey yeah i think joey's funny enough i think kelsey's funny enough i i think they're joking not joking yeah, but no, like they're it, they're playing into this yeah I, I think they are but like they are definitely still 
you know, it looks like they're happy. And that's, that's the thing that's paramount, right? Is their happiness. Yeah. Big word. Paramount. paramount. Well done. Word of the week. Um, all right. Two more things we can get to real quick before we let you hear from Greer. Um, Susie has a new bachelor podcast beyond the bachelor. I haven't looked too much into it, but Michael, I, every, everyone has a bachelor podcast, but us. <laughs> Like under ABC's little network, they're just giving it to everyone. Anyone who's from the show that people like, they're like, here's a podcast. It's getting obsessive, excessive. Sorry. Uh, I mean, they really need to raise the price of, 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 of podcast equipment. <laughs> if I see that comment one more time, first of all, we, they're like, Oh, we need to, that's, that's been my whole life for the last two years. Every comment I get from a podcast clip, the first comment is we need to raise the price of podcast equipment. First of all, these are karaoke mics. This was 15 bucks. Like they should, they don't need to raise the price pretty cheap. Go buy one. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't think we need another. I love Susie. I think she's great. I would love her yeah. to just have her own podcast talking about her life, not being tied to the network, but they're just, they're handing out podcasts like candy these days. That's crazy because we like candy. We're number one. We're going to be the number one Bachelor podcast. People are going to be like, who the hell are those guys? They're like, that's bad boys. Bachelor Nation. You guys just. Bad boys. Bad, bad boys. Bad boys. What's your go- and girl. And girl. Um, all right. Last thing I want to talk about, something I noticed yesterday as I was doing research for our interview with Greer. They don't make it easy to watch the show. Like the entire, you can't watch the latest seasons of the show, not all of them. So with the last season of Paradise, you can't find that anywhere. You, Hulu? not on Hulu. Wait, what? Go Paradise? watch, go try to find Paradise on Hulu right now. Can't watch it. I tried. I literally tried to go watch Greer's episode. They. That's where I watched Paradise. I know. It's so when it, aired, oh, but-, but now it, after 30 days, it's just gone and you have to buy it. But you can't, it's not even available for purchase, at least in where I'm at, it said. Well, I think it costs money for them to like have it on Hulu for. Yeah, but yeah. they have older seasons of Paradise on there. They have seasons like five of Paradise. Why, why would you not have the most recent season for people to catch up? If Joey Season's doing so well, yeah. have the most recent seasons of the show so people can watch them. Another example you have to buy Charity Season. They should just put that on Hulu. They have huh. other Bachelorette seasons on Hulu. They don't have charity season. Why can't we go watch that? That's dumb. Um, you can't watch the beginning of yeah. Joey's season. It's only it's what? only the last three episodes or f- four or five episodes. You can't watch episode one, night one. No Billie no Eilish? No Billie Eilish moment. So it's it, that makes no sense. And I'm sure there's a reasoning behind it that I don't understand yeah. right now. But I can't comprehend the fact that but like where like they're not making or losing money, money from it. I don't know how they can be making money not having those seasons available. Like it just feels like they're know. hand choosing what they think we will like, what seasons, what moments that we will like. Don't do that. Just let us take in the entirety of the show and make decisions for ourselves. Yeah. That's my only point there. Pop off, Wyatt. Slay, Wyatt. Preach. Preach. Preach King. That just really bothered me as I was trying to watch last season of Paradise. You literally can't find it. I tried I'm gonna whisper this part. I tried to pirate it on like one of those crazy websites. Sorry, sorry. Sue me. <gasps> FBI come knocking on my door. I tried to pirate. Couldn't even do that. It's not even available there on like a one, two, three movies type thing. It's not. Other seasons are. <laughs> one, two, three I, I did movies. use one, two, three movies. Other seasons are available there, not season nine. It, it makes That's no weird. sense. I, it's it's gone. You'll never be able to watch season nine. Yeah, that is that is very strange. But I mean, to be fair, the Bachelor, Bachelorette, that whole franchise, it is a show that's based on watching it as it comes out. Yeah. You know, like watching it weekly. It's not going to be something you binge. Like, I don't know. I feel like you could. I could go back and binge a Netflix reality TV season from a couple years ago, but it's not the same. Yeah. Like, that's not the. It's not what they try to get but out like, of. Say of you're getting ready franchise. for Gen season of The Bachelorette. A lot of people are talking about Joey season. You're like, oh, maybe I'll go back and watch it to see who this Gen girl is. You can't watch night one. Yeah. You can't. You can only watch see a part of the story. And it's so dumb. It doesn't make any sense to me. 
Um, I just wanted to rant about that for a little bit. Like if Greer, who's going to be on in very shortly, if she wants to show her kids one day, look, I was on TV on Bachelor in Paradise for 10 seconds. You can't do that. Sorry, that was mean. Sorry, Greer. Um, but yeah, she can't do that because it's just not available anywhere. It's so dumb. It doesn't make any sense, and it bothers me. So I just wanted to point. If anyone knows where yeah. to watch it, let me know because I couldn't find it. Maybe it's – I think it's only on DVD and Blu-ray. Yeah. Yeah, it's only in theaters. You have to go to the theaters to watch Paradise, which I would totally do. It like twelve hours straight. Yeah. The brain, the brain rot of just sitting in a theater watching Paradise for twelve straight oh hours. Oh. That'd be funny. Um, all right, well, Mike, if you don't have anything else, uh, I think we can send it to Greer. Yeah, back back to you in the studio. Back to you, Greer. Greer. See you in a second. Hello, everyone. Today, we are joined by a very special guest, uh, a woman who has been actually a part of this show probably since episode one, I think. Weirdly enough, you just find your way back yeah. into it. Um, and here we are finally. You are one time Batchmaker Award nominee. You didn't win it. Maybe next time. Sorry. Okay. We can get to that in a second. You were nominated for the She Deserves Better Award for Paradise. So that's a good award. I think. I'll take it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's like a you know participation award. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's also someone we want to wish a uh, belated birthday to. Greer is here, everybody. Thank Let's clap it up. You. Uh, how was your birthday? It looked crazy based off your Instagram. That was a, quite the setup you guys had. Thank you. I am such an Aries and take my birthday very seriously. So, of course, I had to be extra, just like me. And uh, I did a full-on picnic in Central Park. It was amazing. Now, did you did you plan the whole set? Are you a birthday week girl? Are you do you have more festivities? I'm a one or is and it done. Just one day. I'm a okay. one and done. I want all the birthday wishes on the right day. I don't want someone randomly on a Tuesday saying happy birthday, and I'm like, it's not for another week. Let's just rip off the band aid and then do it again next year. Love that. That's awesome. Then we, uh, then we take back our ablated birthday. Yeah, before, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, save it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till next year. Um, but yeah, your roommate, Davia, mm -hmm. friend of the program. And by that, I mean, I think she just maybe commented one time on one of the videos. That's all it takes. <laughs> yeah. that, that's all it takes nowadays. Um, but we love the roommate content. But is there anything she does that just drives you crazy? Because we all have roommates that, you know, do some things. <laughs> what, what's the pet peeve? <laughs> What she does that drives you crazy. She's got her headphones in, but she knows exactly what you guys just asked, and she's ready. Um, she's so ready. Davia almost lights our apartment on fire at least, like, how many nights a week? How many nights a week do you cook? <laughs> too many. <laughs> too many. I mean, like, last week, uh, we always have to, like, open up all the windows because it, she just hot boxes it from burning like whatever she's cooking. And uh, last week, what was it? Sam, the salmon, she threw it on a, a pan and she goes, look, I'm cooking. And I was like, oh, so proud of you. And I walked over, char, just char all over <laughs> the entire salmon. She goes, I think it's cooked. And you cut into it and it's just raw, raw and char. <laughs> oh, brutal. Well, maybe we'll get Davion soon at some point. She can defend herself a little bit. Uh, I'm sure there's stuff you do that drives her crazy. That's roommates. That's what happens. It's just you, you learn to live with each other. Definitely. And I uh, – so, like, I like to – when I cook, I like to offer her things. But she's also gluten-free and dairy-free. So I'll, like, slay away in the kitchen. She goes, mm, I can't eat that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right. So, obviously – I think it was all last year. You were on our screens a lot for well, two different seasons. So when are you recognized much in like New York? And if you are recognized, is there a certain moment they're like, oh, yeah, you did that one thing. Is there one thing they point to? Yeah, um, usually I'm really recognized when my hair is slicked back. Uh, like when I do like a tight, like tight bun, that's when people recognize me. I think my favorite is there's actually one time I was walking in the street and there was this large group of people having drinks and they were like, Greer? And I thought it was some, a friend of mine. And I like, you know, shot my head back and I was like, hey, and realized it was someone I didn't know. And they were like, bachelor. And I was like, yeah. And then I ended up joining the entire party and had margs with them for like two hours. It was really fun. I made new friends. 
<laughs> Hell, did they did they buy you drinks or were we? Yeah, you they on did. Your it, own? Was on, it was on the house. They felt really bad for yeah. me, so <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's tough. <laughs> They're like, you deserve this. I was like, that's I do. Tough. Thank you. Um, so on Paradise, going uh, going back to your short but but sweet time on Paradise. Um, after you left Paradise, did you have like FOMO? You know, kind of leaving and not yeah. being there with, you, with your homies. For sure, because Davia replaced me. She was the bombshell, and I was like ready to kick it with her on the sand. And I left, and then she uh, she came, and I wasn't there. We were supposed to be a dangerous duo, but it was just she was just dangerous. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Did you guys? So you guys both say, "All right, we're doing Paradise." You get asked yeah. to do it, and you're like, "Oh, sweet, we're gonna be on the beach together." And then you never get that opportunity. But did you know yeah. how early on did you find out you were going before her? And then were you just like, maybe I can hold on. She shows up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, I honestly, I didn't really talk to any of the other girls before because Davi and I are so, so close. And uh, everyone was like very like quiet, hush, hush about if they were going, if they're not. And with Davi and I, we had, we like picked our outfits together. We picked our swimsuits. We made sure we weren't like packing the same thing. And we was like, oh, I love that. I'll just borrow it when I get there. Uh, which never happened, but, um, yeah, I know we were, we were so excited. We were like, we're going to Mexico and, uh, we did go just not together. It's unfortunate. So little follow-up question on paradise. Yeah. Wells, the bartender, mm -hmm. does he actually like make good drinks or is it all just for show? Because I always see him, you know, kind of cooking up some drinks, but well, are they quality? Is he a good Wells bartender? can make a Wells drink. Let me tell you that he can that. do it. You want Wells? You'll get, you'll get it. You'll get it. But like, I mean, is he going to make uh, an extravagant cocktail? Probably not. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah. he's great for conversation. Actually, what was so great about meeting Wells was I found out that I went to Ole Miss and so did he. And I didn't know that. And so we realized that we were both alum. So it was really cool talking to him because we're cut from some similar cloth. So we like, actually, I talked to Wells probably a little too much, uh, which is probably why I went home too soon we became friends <laughs> <laughs> it's always tough when you're friends with the bartender right that's never I, a good sign i know it's not it's usually a sign you've got more problems than you realize but <laughs> <laughs> wait so i did i guess i didn't realize you went to old miss are you originally from the south are you like yeah from the, where are you from originally yeah i'm from houston texas so i'm a southern oh, nice. nice and then you've been in new york for a couple of years now Mm -hmm. I've been in New York since 2020. I moved here, pandemic, crazy year. As one does, just global pandemic. I'm going to move across the country. Exactly. Smart. To the most po populated city. That's my in first America. red flag. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so with Paradise, we talked mm -hmm. about it short, sweet. You're kind of in and out. Once you found out that the paradise season, there were no couples still together. The engagements didn't kind of work out. Yeah. Were you kind of like, sweet, dodged a bullet? Because if everyone comes out engaged, you're like, this sucks. I missed out. But no one, no one came out like necessarily crazy happy. So you're like, ah, I'm okay. I mean, I don't <laughs> wish harm on anyone. I was hoping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was hoping. It's like, hey, like. I don't know. I, 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 it sucked. Like these people I'm, I'm friends with, like that sucks. Like the relationship didn't work out. Honestly, like I made, I think I was friend zoned a bunch on the beach. Um, and I friend zoned other people and I just became friends with everyone. And, you know, once you're friends with someone, they're kind of in that box and mm -hmm. that's kind of that, like you don't really want to go in between or out of the lines do you do you agree so i've heard this box, box theory, box theory. Yeah. Are, so you're a proponent yeah. of that you believe in the box theory One hundred thousand percent. i don't know i don't know if i'm Absolutely. bought in yet i think people can neb and flow a little bit uh but no i right. i think it's a preference i'm not saying this applies to okay. everyone i'm saying that me personally yes i'm a very oh, okay. zero or 100 person i'm never lukewarm i'm never one foot in one foot out it's just like i'm in or i'm not arm out and mm -hmm. if i meet you and i don't feel like this chemistry or this romantic connection you'll always be a friend gotcha that makes sense i kind of live in that gray area just permanently with everything always so maybe that's my red flag 
I'm never <laughs> one foot in, one foot out. I'm just, I'm just kind of floating there. Yeah. Dang, you're, just, so, you're in limbo. Yeah, I'm in limbo <laughs> consistently. It's it's actually hell, but it's the life I chose. <laughs> it's okay. At least you chose it. Yeah, exactly. So we saw that you nominated yourself for the show originally, yeah. right? Is that correct? This is true. And so because you nominated yourself, you got in, should you nominate us? So maybe you can like ride the hot hand and so we can, you know. Yeah, I mean. I, I nominated one. myself. Yeah. And, I'm, we're, I'm, and we're I'm over happy to four. put it in a, in a name and a word. Absolutely. If, you, if you're up for it, do you, do you want to go through what we go through? <laughs> that's a great question should, is there anything we shouldn't want to go through what, what's what's like the cautionary tale what should we avoid you know it's just it's just tv right like you know like there's a lot that that goes on it's high stress um it's hard to like trust your trust your gut and your intuition in that environment like usually what you would do in the real world it's tested and you're like is this what i would do on a normal date or a normal day like is should I be doing that here or should I change it up? So yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's tough because this is this is like our version of TV, but yeah, I control I control the edit. I I, I control what goes out. <laughs> I can make Michael look stupid if I want to. I won't. Right. Which, he ha you, you have you have you get past. mad at me you for cl I clip things that he doesn't like that are clipped, and then I get in trouble for it. it. Is what it is. But I think Michael would do better on the show than me personally. So that's a compliment to you, Michael. What do you think? You've never said that to me before know, in your life. So I will take that to heart as a compliment. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So Appreciate if you it. nominate anyone, Guru, nominate Michael. Okay. Okay. I got you. Um, now, I want to kind of go back to Bachelor experience. Mm -hmm. You had a, a weird experience. You get the first impression rose and then COVID, quarantine. I want to talk about the quarantine experience because I've mm -hmm. talked to – I talked with uh, Logan from – the season before mm -hmm. Gabby and Rachel's, whenever that was, all the seasons blend together. Mm -hmm. But he had a, like a similar experience with COVID and left because mm -hmm. of it. How, how much does that quarantine really suck? Like that had to be the worst quarantine ever because you know what you're missing out on. Yeah. And you're not like home. Like at least when I quarantine, I'm home with my family. I'm, I'm by people. You're just by yourself. Mm -hmm. What was that like? What are the horror stories from that quarantine? Mm hmm. Well, first of all, I love that you mentioned Logan because we actually became friends off of a mutual experience. I DM'd him and I said, I, I heard you had a really positive experience. <laughs> and awesome. it went, thank you, thank you. I'm really into puns. So, uh, yeah, but it, 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 it sucked. I was in Estonia, and it's actually hilarious. Um, Texas education did not teach us that Estonia existed. So we get to... Yeah. Yeah. So I remember what? like, th yeah, like I said this on camera, this is actually ridiculous, but I, I was like, I didn't know this existed. And then I asked them, is that okay if I say that? And they're like, yeah, it's fine. And I was so convinced that was going to air on television. It yeah. didn't, but uh, now this is going to air. Now it's anyway. here. <laughs> but, um, it's getting here now. <laughs> now. So, um, yeah, I ended up I'm quarantined here for in Estonia for uh, up to seven days. The only form of communication I had was uh, what I wanted to eat. I would have someone call me at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and that's the only communication I had. Uh, television, TV was in a different language, but I found an English version of Noah's Ark, and I watched that continuously. And they got me puzzles, so I like had puzzles and my journal, like. I had to burn the journal. Like what the, I went crazy. Like the stuff that I was writing, I sounded fucking insane. Um, so I was just, and I had no symptoms. I wasn't sick. Yeah. So I, I just like, all I did, I slept like 12 hours a day, just trying to like get through the week, get through it, get through it. It was actually really, it sucked. And um, I, the reason why, like I even, decided to continue this journey that I was on was because I was, I had this idea that I was finally going to get this one-on-one. -on -one. So that's why I agreed to go to Budapest after that. God, yeah. I mean, yeah. at that point you almost, if you're going to go through that hell of an experience, you're like, might as well maybe get a fiance out of this. So might as well stick it out and see what happens. 
Well, yeah, I was like, I, I like I said, I'm a zero one hundred. So I, yeah. uh, I, I thought to myself, I don't want to ever think what if. And in my mind, yeah. I was like, oh, they're not sending me home. There must actually be a really strong connection here. I don't want to self sabotage. Mm-hmm. Let me see it through. Let me put myself through it. And then by the time that I got to Budapest, I was like there for actually like two days away from everyone. And then um, I met up with Zach and I thought it was going to be a ha ha, like, so good to see you. We're going to da 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 da, the bathhouse or just something. I thought it was going to turn into that because when I, when I got there, I was so exhausted, like flew the flying, the just being like sleeping constantly and just like the, it's just very emotionally draining. And so I, I get to, I get to the room and, uh, Zach at the time was asking me questions like, are you ready to give this a shot? Like, are you ready to keep this going? Are you, do you want this to continue? So in my mind, I'm like, Whoa, this is my decision. And so then like I was sitting there for about like 40 minutes and like he ended up like coming back in and sent me home. So it was just like an emotional roller coaster of just like physical exhaustion, uh, not really knowing like what move to make. I'm not, I like playing chess, but I'm not good at it. Um, I don't know how to like, I, I was just thinking to myself, what's the best decision for myself? Because I was put in this really unique situation where we had such a strong connection in the beginning. And uh, I wasn't sure if by me leaving was self-sabotaging or I need to stay and stick it out because we had so much time robbed. Yeah. Now, that makes a ton of sense because especially in your situation with the first impression, Rose, you were validated very early. So you yeah. had that experience and you're like, oh, there's something here to hold on to through quarantine. Mm-hmm. And then you got to see it out. So that makes sense. Um, other question about that season. I saw that you were sorority sisters with Gabby. Is that true? That's true. Yeah. Were you guys, did you guys line up together? Like, I don't know how the ages were. We, we knew it. We knew each other. We like, uh, my big was her best friend. So oh. we went to parties together. We weren't friends, but we went to parties yeah. together. And so when we first, it was the first night, we both did a double take and we were like, holy shit, you, I know you. (laughs) And uh, yeah, but I, I honestly, I don't even know if Gabby knows this, but um, I like kind of stayed away from Gabby because I thought that they were purposely doing that to have us not get along. Make that be a story. Yeah. Yeah. So I purposely removed myself and didn't and didn't interact with Gabby as much as I would have wanted to. Gotcha. You girls yeah. have to be legends there. Mm-hmm. Have you gone back and everyone's like, yeah, those, those are my girls. They were both on the same. Like, do they do they <laughs> love you over there now? I haven't gone back, but I need to. I need to coordinate with her and say, like, hey, should we just have a moment? Yeah. And just walk back just, in the house. And just I don't know. round of yeah, they would get love a round, you there. Get a round of applause. <laughs> or worst case scenario, they're like. Nobody. Like, who the fuck are you? Who the, that who would be the worst. Who do you know here? Yeah, no, that, that's actually who do you what know would happen. They would, it's like, you know, the people who go back to high school and they think yeah. they were like this like big shot and everyone's like, like, yeah, this was my teacher. Like, this was my classroom. They're like, who the fuck are you? Or like yeah. J-Lo when she went back to her old ho- her old house and this, she goes, this was my house. Someone's like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. No, it's so real. Yeah. I, I coached tennis at my old high school and I get that all the time that's my daily experience they're like oh you went here I'm like yeah I went here duh and no one cares obviously so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tough life you're like wait do you still go here yeah, I get that a lot too as a coach is tough people think I'm still in high school which it'll work out in the long run but right now kind of sucks um so hopping back to to paradise is there anybody that showed up later on the beach that you know, you kind of wish was there at the start when you were there. Besides Davia, you know, what's what's, yeah, <laughs> what what's dude wise, dude wise, what's what's the tea there? Um, I'm trying to think, cause like now I've met some of them and I wouldn't want to. Uh, so I'm trying to think. Mm. 
I wish you, I, this question would have been better if it was asked like before I met these people, but now I have, so I feel differently. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess one person that I wanted to meet was Jordan V. Uh, but he came, mm-hmm. they, they made him come in so late. Yeah, it was late. But he was from, from Rachel's, from Rachel's season. Uh, yeah, the driver. Yeah, the driver. Yeah, I, I thought he was super cool. I have this, like, fantasy of being, like, an F1 driver myself. So I, like, I was, uh, I was really into it. I was like, oh, it's really cool. I want to meet him. But uh, he came in so late. That's yeah. That's tough. Um, how cool is Olivia in real life? Because she's arguably up there with one of my favorite people of all time. And I love her. Is she as cool in person? Oh, yeah. She's, she's, she's my girl. She's great. She's like very straight. I, I love someone who's straightforward and real and says what's on her mind. And she does all of that. So I ride at dawn. Good. For we we, we love Olivia here. She won a lot of awards. She's at the top of our She has our intro. The line where she said, um, what is it, Mike? I'm up. She's stuck. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm up. She's stuck. Hello, hi. That's been our you? intro for the last like two months. We've just That's been incredible. saying that line. It's all she's iconic. She she runs this show. If she wants to cancel it, we'll cancel it. If that if that's what it takes. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, we love Olivia. Glad to know that she's as cool in person. She is really, really cool. I'm actually I've been she's upstate New York, so me and Davi have been trying to get her to come to New York yeah. City all the time. So yeah, she's good people. Um you mentioned on uh, Zachary's podcast that you're not currently in a relationship mm-hmm. and you know keeping that stuff private um, but in you know prior prior things how do you you know typically go about the soft launch hard launch kind of thing what what tips and tricks do you recommend for the people out there soft launching don't do it <laughs> really you're against the don't soft do launch it. just don't do it yeah I I did it don't do it there's just too many like Ugh, like there's there's too many cooks in the kitchen everyone has an opinion um i just i say don't do it personally i'm never well, so i'm not just, posting someone until there's a ring on my finger okay so uh, you go straight to the hardest of launches yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. yeah. The, if there's a soft launch they're like deep in the, the photo dump and like you can't tell if like they're my like my gay yeah. bestie or or yeah. like friend yeah that's all. I, I'm sensing a trend there with people who go on The Bachelor because Katie Thurston has told me that exact same thing. She's like, I'm not announcing anything until there's a ring on a finger. Yeah. I also don't believe her. I think she'll definitely post, but we'll see. I, I believe you for now, but I, I feel like it's hard. You're dating someone. You're like, oh, like this is my well, life. Yeah. So. You get so excited and you're so like, you're so proud of the person you're with. You want to just share yeah. them with everyone. Like, I totally get it. I was... I was planning my soft launches. I was so giddy. I was like, every time I posted, I was like, ah, like we look so good. And I couldn't wait to share it with everyone. I was just so proud of who I was with. And even everyone in, in general um, that I've ever been with, I've been so proud of post. But this was like my first relationship, like being in any kind of, um, anyone actually like watching yeah. what who I'm mm-hmm. with or like an article coming out. And I, I really... I didn't, I didn't think that all the way through. I was just a girl that was excited about who she was dating and kind of forgot for a second that it's not just about me. It's about that person too. Yeah. We, uh, we, we might've been following along a little bit, you know, just <laughs> keeping our tabs, <laughs> seeing where the soft launch, the hard, like we were waiting for the hard launch. We were, we were discussing like where, it, what's going on here. We couldn't figure it out. You were good at yeah. it. If you were trying to be cryptic, Thank you were you. very good at it. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Do you want me to give advice for like, if you want to do it? Okay, if you want to do it, uh, cut their head off as much as possible. Uh, get a little hand in, get a little hand action in. Yeah. Um, maybe like a shadow of them, some like holding hands, like walking on a sidewalk. That can make the cut. Okay. These are All good. Right. Definitely good soft now, launches. At, at this point, but at this point, are you guys dating? Like, are you soft launching when you're already dating or like? I don't know, like, where in the process of the relationship do you start the soft launch? I'm trying to get a timeline here, just for I my mean, future. I, I, I'll, yeah, I say soft launch if you're exclusive or if you're dating. I, I think usually when you're exclusive, you pretty much are dating. Like, you're just, like, too scared yeah. to put a label on it. So I would say, yeah, once you're, like, locked in, just you and that person, absolutely. 
But if you're still, when you're not locked in, you're still in the market, why would you, why would you let it's people true. know? Exactly. Yeah. I like that. Um, all right. I want to try a new segment here where uh, we say something nice about our friends. Uh, Brittany Galvin, friend of the program. You want to just say something nice about Brittany? She's awesome. She's my best friend and she is funny as fuck. I love her. She's so, re- she's so genuine. She's so real. I, I literally, she lives in Chicago and I, she comes to visit me in New York and I see her more in New York than my friends who live here. So <laughs> I've also have traveled constantly with her. We were in Costa Rica together for New Year's. Like she, my friends have become her friends. She's family at this point. I, I love, love that girl. That's a uh, funny story about Brittany is I, it was during COVID when I had her on after her season and she came on, we recorded the episode and my computer crashed immediately after. I don't, I've never even told her this. So this is why there's no video version of the podcast. Um, so I only saved the audio of that one. So she's the only episode of any podcast I've done that only has an audio version. And I don't want her to think like, I was like, I don't want to show her on video or something, but okay. it was literally my computer died and I never told her this. So there's only an audio version of that podcast. I felt <laughs> good to get off my chest. I just needed to get that out there. It's okay. Mercury's I, I in retrograde. This is the time of reflection and atonement. Yeah. So <laughs> this is good. <laughs> well, ne- next time, next time you're in Chicago, Michael's in Chicago. I'm in Indiana. We'll d- I'll drive up. We all hang out. We go get drinks. I I'm so down for that. I'm so, I'm she's coming up to Boston. There's a little runway thing that me and Davi are doing, but I think we're going to Chicago to see her. When is it? June? Are we doing June, Chicago? Yeah, let's do it. Davia too. Oh, I just checked my schedule. I'm free all of June. We'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. Looking forward to it. We'll go to yeah. Wrigley. It'll be great. Clear yeah. out the whole month. Yeah. I'm, I'm free. Just did. Clear. We all know. Um, so you talked about how kind of difficult the job market was when you got back from, you know, the bachelor and stuff like yeah. that. We currently are only in Indianapolis and Chicago. So you're, you're welcome to be the New York correspondent of the batch makers. If you want little segment, the T what's the T with Greer. I think that's a great name for it um, for all batch maker drama uh, bachelor drama, but we can't really pay you, but <laughs> vi- we, we pay, we pay you in vibes. We pay you in vibes. vibes. Are high that's, currency. that's all we got. So yeah, you can be like our insider. I don't know if you're a sports girl, mm-hmm. but like Adam Schefter breaks a bunch of news in like the sports mm-hmm. world. Maybe like if you get some tea with like the New York bachelor people, just shoot us mm-hmm. a text and it will be like breaking news. Sources <laughs> confirm these people are dating or like he this couple's filled. broken up. Yeah. yeah, and then as we can may, maybe pay you eventually, you but right now we don't have that in our budget. I apologize. I get that. I get that. I, I love that you mentioned that because I've thought about it. I thought about little like tea segments of spilling the tea. <laughs> if, well, if you need so, a platform on the same, you're the tea girl. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it's what, so funny. What are you, yeah, it's funny what that are your thoughts that, on that. Yeah, it's so funny that scene is because um, a lot of people don't really understand my humor especially like I feel like on television and uh I don't get me wrong like I am a a tea drinker but um I think that like I just kept like I thought it was funny and so I kept saying it I thought it was a good like little joke to like act like I cared but then I kept doing it over and over again like all day and I didn't realize those clips were going to be used all day and so I just saw this like video montage of me upset about tea and I'm like that's hilarious. I was kidding, but hilarious. I'm in it. And I just, I just, I, you know, we'll ride. We'll ride with it. Yeah. So are, are you, are you tea over coffee? I am. Yeah. The, yeah. Cause I, I like coffee. I'm very 80, very ADD, like almost ADHD. And so whenever I drink coffee, I just get really hyper to the point where like, I don't even need that energy. So the tea is just really there. Like Cause like, it's a family thing. Like my mom is from South Africa. Uh, so like we used to like drink tea together, at like an afternoon tea growing up every day. So that was like my source of beverage. Love that. Well, very random. Michael and I were arguing before you hopped on, um, about mm-hmm. new sodas. So I drink a ton of poppy 
And then he's mm-hmm. a big Olipop person. I don't know if you have a preference, if you've had any of them before. Do you know any of these sodas? Do you have a hot the take on any of those? Yeah. Yeah, like I think they're fire. Tea. I think they're so good. I think they're good for your gut. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. I drink one a day. It's addicting and it's very bad, but they're good for me, I, so I guess it's good. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, usually things are good in, like, small doses, larger doses. It does get more unhealthy, <laughs> but uh, it's up to you. But hey, like you got you get your carbonation, you get your bubbles. Yeah, it's good. That's why I, I'm I'm at the point where I need I like I love soda, but I'm like I need to stop drinking it. I'm like a, I need a Coke or Dr Pepper yeah. a day. So I'm like if I can switch that with Poppy, that's got to be a better alternative. Has to be better than what I was doing before. Yeah. So. Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I am so. big on Coke. I I love a good Coke. Mm. Uh, something so make, i think mcdonald's has the most crisp coke and i like i actually crave it a lot and so this weird thing that happens to me when i drink uh, a coke is and it's so satisfying that my my eyes water i'm so happy <laughs> wait every time you drink yeah, a coke first, your eyes is like yeah the first sip of, of a coke like it's like i'm i'm like so satisfied that my eyes like water up a little bit I, you, I didn't. Re- you yeah. might be allergic wow. to Coke somehow. Because no, like I don't no, think that's. It real. feels too good for it to be not allergic. <laughs> just, wow. That's. I'm, I'm never, just imagining I'm you like bawling, that. drinking Coke, and someone sees you in your car, just like walking on the street. You're like, what the fuck is happening? If you want to see me <laughs> bawling, just, just you'll see me. You'll you'll see me in the street of New York. If you want to see me crying. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> So uh, we used to have a podcast on Good Time last year, maybe for the past two years, called Top 10 Tuesday, where we do a different topic every Tuesday. And one of the topics we did was Top 10 First Dates. Okay. So as a woman, what is your go-to first date or what your ideal first date is? Go-to first date? Um... Honestly, I would love it. I love games. And my go-to first date would definitely be an arcade. I think if someone took me to an arcade, I would be so pumped. Like an arcade bar? Or just like an actual arcade? An arcade bar could be could be anything. Could be like, there's like, uh, there's actually a bar in, in New York called uh, Sour, I think it's called sour mouse is that way you pronounce it? okay dobby's like going like this as if she's like oh, come on i'm gonna know um and it's fun there's ping pong there's billiards like there's a bunch of like activity and i love love that stuff like i'm not even good at ping pong but i get really into it so love that shows the competitive side yeah. some more stuff to yeah, do yeah it's an activity and it's not i don't feel like i'm on an interview yeah, I'm I'm a proponent of putt putt. I think putt putt's the number. I think that was my number one. Mm-hmm. I think mini golf is it, you're active. You can be a little competitive. You can joke about that. You can talk and walk. I th- I think putt putt is my number one. Huge. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't like dinners have... on the first date. Oh, oh, you don't like dinners? No, I think that you don't know me. Yeah, and I don't know you. Like, let's mm-hmm. like probably do something that like will let us know who we are a little more before we're like sitting down and chewing in front of each other <laughs> you, you only chew around people you trust exactly yeah. Yeah. um all right i have one more question for you before we're gonna bring lizzie in to ask some questions we give her we only let her talk for like two minutes because she she gets wild you know you never know where lizzie's she gonna does, go with it it's because you don't pay her enough is that, is that the truth? don't we don't we de- that's a hundred percent she's the best i'm joking she's the best producer in the business and we're very lucky to have her but uh i want to know the history behind your name greer because that's oh. a very like like out there unique name and i want to know a small part of you do you think i could be the number one most famous greer in the world because the sample size is so small because i've thought about that with wyatt's like i want to be up there what's the history behind greer and have you thought about that yeah uh so greer uh my name was uh i, <laughs> I was named after uh this actress from the 1940s her name's greer garson and my mom was just flipping through a magazine, saw the name, fell in love with it. And it was between Greer or Gertrude. 
Um, I'm obviously very disappointed they went with Greer. And <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of how the name Greer was born. Uh, it's Irish. I'm not Irish, but uh, it's just, it's cool. I, I, it's funny because I, I hated my name growing up because I was never on a keychain at a gas station. Oh, same. And it's the worst. The worst. The worst. Yeah. And I remember being at Schlitterbahn, this like um, this water park amusement park when I was like really young and I really wanted this like keychain with my name on it. Couldn't find it. I was so upset. And I remember telling my mom for a couple of years that I was going to change my name to Alex. And, um, <laughs> but uh, I never did that. And now I'm happy because now when someone says my name in a room, it's just my head turning and not like a bunch of random other people. I love that. That's, yeah, that's the one benefit is you never know. You never get a, like confused for someone else. Like, but I, I always got in school when teachers would yell quiet. I would freak out because I thought they were yelling my name half the time. It sounds Wyatt. Like if they say right. quick, it was like quiet. And I was like, uh, I freak out. So that was tough. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, it is nice. It, it Pros and cons of having a unique name. So Definitely. I understand like, the, the cool thing sucks. is too, when I meet people and, and I don't give them my phone number or in my information, it's really easy to find me. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've had like a couple people where I've left, I've Irish, and like they'll message me, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> nailed it. Um, all right, well, Lizzie, in with some hard hitting questions here. Okay. Yeah, super. Thank you. Yes, these are Lizzie, super the hard hitting. Um, so my first question: Who is your yeah. celebrity crush, if you have one? Oh my god, um, Lil Dicky. <laughs> Stop. So hold up. Have you watched Dave? Wow. Yeah, I love Dave. Oh, great. Uh -huh. I knew I loved you, but this, that was incredible. I, Dave Thank was you. one of my favorite shows of all time. I think the last season was incredible. Brad Pitt showing up. I've been trying to get people to watch it, and they don't want to watch it because they're like, why would mm -hmm. I watch the Little Dicky show? It's awesome. It's so good. His comedic timing is amazing. He's a genius. I, I think he's great. I've been hitting <laughs> on him since I was like 17. It hit. <laughs> I, I found out he was Jewish. I invited him to Passover. <laughs> like I, <it> just, <laughs> I made a Twitter oh, account it. just for him. <laughs> oh, you are in deep. Uh, shoot your shot. Shoot I was your shooting, shot. but I missed. It's, it's okay. Um, okay. Shot. It is still open. Still Maybe open. I think. Okay. No, I think he's happy. I think. Is he? <laughs> yeah. I hate, don't you hate when people are happy? That's the worst. Damn it. Uh, my second yeah. question. Do you have a favorite TV show? Um, Severance right now. Ooh. I love that show. Season two is coming out like next fall. Yep. Next I every time like Google like knows how much I love it. And so it, it gives me updates constantly. Like they're like season two coming out this time. And I'm on the edge of my seat. Okay. And I yeah. so I'm more of like a music I like learning about people through like what they listen to and music wise. Um, if you could choose one song mm -hmm. that you feel like summarizes you or, you know, describes you as a person, what would it be? That's a tough one, Lizzie. That's, that's a really a hard that's one. A hard hitting question. Because yeah. what I look because what I listen to would shock you. I I listen to Twenty One Savage, so <laughs> All right. Um oh, oh, you know what? My fa I'll tell you my favorite artist. My favorite artist is Hippie Sabotage. I love every every song, every album. I've crowd surfed at their concerts. Um, they're great. I love all of their songs. Well done. Good job, Lizzie. Hell yeah. That was, that was our second ever Lizzie segment. She's getting better and better each week. It's awesome. No, this, the song uh, thing's hard. That's, that's, a, that's a good one. You had me stumped. Yeah. I was uncomfortable. I was like, I don't have an answer. <laughs> Lizzie, you might have just walked yourself into a raise right there. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Greer, thank you so much for coming on. I want to give you the opportunity to let people know where they should follow you. They won't see any soft launches or hard launches, but where should they find you? Where do you want them to follow you? Yeah. If you want to keep up with me and see uh, who I'm not dating, uh, my Instagram is Cheerio underscore Greerio. And if you want to hear my voice, my TikTok is just my name, Greer Blitzer. Hell yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. This was a ton of fun.
Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad that we could do this.